you weren't thinking that you're gonna be seeing me so soon. How wrong you were. Hello guys and welcome back to Sophisticated Obsession. You thought I was lying to you last week when I said that I was back. I know you thought it. And to be honest, I'm gonna level with you. I wasn't really too sure if I was gonna be back this week as well. So guys, I hope that you are all doing well and we are back with another Lullabo City exclusive. So today, we are gonna be heading onto the other side of the globe. But before we do that, we've obviously got to go through the ground rules. What is a city exclusive? Now, I know that for those of you that have been watching my videos, you already know this, you've already seen this, so feel free to skip ahead. The chapters are down below. So for those of you that are new, thank you. And of course, if you do like this content, then please smash the like button, because that's really good. So a city exclusive is a fragrance that is native to one country in the Lullabo world. Now, these are countries that have dedicated Lullabo stores and are like standalone stores rather than just concessions. So with each country that has a dedicated Lullabo store, there will be a signature fragrance for that city. All throughout the year, you can buy that signature fragrance from that store. However, in the month of September, Lullabo opens their doors and their city exclusive fragrance fly across the world. Now, the beauty of that is that these fragrances are then available on the website for purchase rather than needing to go to that specific country or that specific city. Let me give you an example. One of my favorite city exclusive fragrances is Citron and that comes from Seoul in Korea. Now the likelihood of me being able to get over to Korea isn't very high. And so therefore I wouldn't have had any opportunity to then go and smell that fragrance and discover it being one of my favorites if it wasn't for the city exclusive events that happen every single September. So today, we are gonna be heading over to Shanghai. Guys, I would like to present to you Myrrh 55. Now, I know that I am pretty late to the game for this one. Uh, this is now a year old. Sorry about my tardiness. So before we get into the fragrance, Let's talk about the name. Lullabo names their fragrances after the main compound that then goes into creating one of the fragrances. So that means that the main note that they really wanted to pay homage to is going to be myrrh. Having said that though, quite a lot of the fragrances that then come from Lullabo, they say one thing, but actually they smell completely different to what you initially think the fragrance to smell like. So the number 55, there are 55 different elements that go into making this compound. Myrrh is just one of those 55. Myrrh, I'm not gonna lie, I was quite surprised that that was gonna be Shanghai's city exclusive. I kind of felt like a jasmine would have been more fitting, but then again, I don't know, maybe there are jasmine notes in here that can temper this. Myrrh, for the most part, is heavy, and it's quite intoxicating if it isn't tempered with softer notes or hopefully some of the delicious musks that Lullabo create. Anyway, are we ready? Let's get in some top notes. Hmm. Okay, this is a hell of a lot more floral and like kind of white floral than I thought it was going to be. What I was saying about like, I hope that the myrrh is tempered. Yeah, it is. To the point where I think if somebody said, this is white florals and this is what we're going to really focus on. And then you've got a little bit of myrrh kind of thrown in there just to add a little bit of body and depth. I'd go... Yeah, all right, fair enough. So for it to actually be called myrrh, I'm a little confused right now, actually. There's a lovely sweetness in here. Now that this is just starting to settle on my skin, it's becoming a little bit jammy. I kind of get the feeling that this comes from jasmine, which, okay, now my predictions kind of make sense, I suppose. In terms of like heaviness, I don't really get that much yet. It's complex, don't get me wrong, there's a lot going on in here, but I don't think that it's like really sort of like 
dark and smoky and almost like oody. There's a bit of an aldehylic, is that even a word? Aldehyde, is what I'm saying. It's not soapy like you've just washed your clothes in your nan's detergent. It's fresh and clean. There's a salty accord here. All of the, the, the ingredients that Lullabo use are vegan friendly, so it wouldn't be actual ambergris, but there is definitely a substitute there. There's this real sort of like rugged element here that then just adds just a, a nice roundness and body to the musks that we've got here. Anybody that knows me will know that I absolutely love Lullabo's musks and I love the work that they do in using musks as a foundation layer that then they build upon with all of their other notes. I think that they are incredibly clever because they're stable and the fragrances seem to kind of linger on the skin because musks, well, certainly for my skin anyway, they latch onto the skin really well. But also with the musks, they add a DNA. You smell a Lillabo fragrance and there is something in there that is unmistakable. I think that's kind of clever because it's almost like they've kind of rubber stamped their brand within a fragrance. I know that a couple of good fragrance companies do this, for example, Mason Francis Cook Jam. There is an element in there that you smell it and you go, that's MFK. Like, you can just tell. So I can already start to sense that this is just developing slightly and we are kind of moving into the heart notes. So I'm gonna leave it for around about half an hour just so then it gives it a lot of time just to kind of air out so that we can then get into those middle notes. So, guys, I'll see you in a bit. Thanks for coming back. I've still got quite a lot of those white florals. Jasmine is what really does spring to mind. Those sort of like jammy elements that I was talking about, they're more fruity. However, I think that what is going on here is that we're now starting to get a little bit more of this kind of like heaviness. We're starting to get a bit of a smokiness coming through. Weirdly enough, right at the start, I thought this was through and through a very feminine fragrance. As this starts to then die down, I'm kind of thinking it is just slap bang in the middle of unisex. It starts off really kind of white floral and beautiful and dainty, but actually, as soon as those sort of heavier elements start to ramp up, I don't know, this turns more masculine. This is a very clever fragrance because I kind of feel like it's quite commercial. I do not mean that Lullabo have created this just to earn a quick buck, but there is definitely a marketability about this. Having said that though, there is one thing that is going to then mitigate against that, and that's the price point. Price points to City exclusive fragrances are eye-wateringly expensive, and so I do think that Although I think that this is almost like a designery type of fragrance with very good use of ingredients and very high quality ingredients to that, I do think that the price point will turn people away. Now, the soapy elements that I mentioned in the top notes, I don't think that they have developed even further. In fact, I think that they are now starting to take a bit of a back seat, but I think that that's just because these kind of like smoky patchouli elements that are now starting to come through, which I'm picking up on. I think that that's kind of what is taking precedent. You've got some real strong patchouli elements with some sort of like myrrh spiciness. Mix that up with some jammy jasmine notes, some fruity elements, and a little bit of aldehyde to give it a soapy clean finish. It is incredibly well constructed and the perfumer obviously knows what they are doing. Right guys, I'm now gonna leave this for a further hour so that we can get well into the base notes. All right, I'll see you in a bit. So if you are really enjoying these videos, then please check out the playlist that I've got for Lillabo because I've made a lot on this fragrance house. Okay, let's get into the base notes. I have to say the white florals that I was getting right at the start, I thought would probably have dissipated and just slightly eased off. Actually, 
they're really strong still. Now the sweet elements, I wouldn't say that they have developed or changed. I think really what we're getting is more of that smokiness coming through, which just adds more depth and body to this fragrance. The fragrance is going to more of a unisex type of fragrance. I wouldn't say that it is overly masculine. I think that those white florals sort of add a little bit of a effeminate flair to this fragrance, but if you are a fan of white florals and you are a fan of sweet elements with smoky undertones, this is your guy. I think in terms of the fragrance, I think it would work as a really lovely daytime fragrance. I think that if the myrrh and the patchouli had been heightened a little bit more, I think it probably would have then turned into more of like an evening, date night, intoxicating fragrance. But I think because of those bright in your face floral elements that we've really got on the top of this, I just feel like this is more daytime wear. I do think though that this is fairly mature. Obviously, it's gonna be mature because the price point is obscene. Now, one thing that is developing, which I have to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of, but that's just me personally, and that is a powdery element. Now, it's not unpleasant because it smells still very, very clean and fresh, like fresh laundry. It doesn't smell dusty in any way, or old, or dated and vintage. It still smells very bright and clean, but there is just a, a, a musky element there that I think that people probably need to then just be aware of. Now, isn't it crazy that we've got two, the base notes now, and we haven't even mentioned myrrh at all. And that's because, really, I haven't come across an awful lot of it. As this has developed, the smokiness now is just starting to turn into a little bit more of like an incense -y type of smell. It's incredibly subtle. If I was completely blind to this and someone sprayed this on me and, and I got to this point, I'd be hard pushed to, to recognize this. In terms of why they've named this myrrh, I have to be honest, I'm perplexed. And there we have it guys. That is my full sample review of Myrrh 55. Thank you so much guys for sticking around and thank you for coming back if you are a subscriber or you have seen some of my videos before because honestly, it means a lot. And also from last week's video that went out, Thank you to everybody that commented welcoming me back. I was blown away by the amount of people that then were, you know, asking for me to come back. So guys, I just want to say I'm really, really humbled. And uh, yeah, it is so nice to be making these videos for you guys again. Hope that you have an amazing day, a great week, and, and I'll see you very soon. Okay, take care guys. See you later.